Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This is a continuation of the Ezekiel Commentary series. We are going to do chapter 8. Um, you know, this is going to be some interesting information if you're, well, you know, interested in the Bible stuff. What can I tell you? And uh, parts of Ezekiel, it's weird. Uh, Ezekiel, just like Isaiah and Jeremiah, sometimes it'll be the past. And then other times it'll be the future. And then another chapter will be back to the present or back to the past. It jumps around. It doesn't follow chronological or time order. So, let's take a look. Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 1. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire. From the appearance of his loins, even downward, fire, and from his loins, even upward, as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of an hand, and took me by a lock of mine head. You know, uh, we're not talking about a master lock or a schlag. We're talking about, you know, a piece of hair. And the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven, and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. So what's up with the north gate? Well, let's take a look at Isaiah 14, verse 11. Thy pomp, you know, uh, you ever heard of somebody, oh, he's pompous? Uh, it's like their self-proclaimed glory. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy vials, voils. You ever heard of a violin? It's a type of musical instrument. The worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Who fell from heaven? Uh, the, the angels, right? They were booted out. They were kicked out. Uh, God served them with an eviction notice. And they got the right foot of disfellowship, a boot in the rear. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. In the sides of the north. In the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. You ever heard people talk about positive confession? 
I will be rich. I will be healthy. I will blah, blah, blah. Didn't work, did it? Uh, it's usually those of the Pentecostal persuasion uh, that do that positive confession stuff. Uh, they think that uh, it's like a magic spell, you know. Uh, instead of abracadabra, which is actually a uh, Kabbalah word, by the way, believe it or not. It was made popular by a Bugs Bunny cartoon in the 50s. Yeah. It says, I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High God. Sorry, Charlie, only the best tuna gets to be star-kissed. That's an old commercial, by the way. So, let's go back to Ezekiel 8. Verse 3. And he put forth the form of a hand and took me by a lock of mine head and the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem to the gate of the to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north. Remember, Lucifer wanted to be, you know, the congregation of the north. Uh, you ever wonder why Satan hang I mean Santa uh, or Satan, you know, Satan and Santa basically the same letters, just the uh, letters are just mixed up a little bit. It's called an anagram, you know. Uh, why does Santa live on the North Pole? Why not the East or the West or the South? Why not the South Pole? You know. Why doesn't he live under the sea in Atlantis? You know, the lost city of Atl Atlantis. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the North. So, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy? Uh, what's all this stuff about uh, jealousy? Well, let's take a look. Let's go to Exodus 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Hey, you want to put Satan before God? Join the church of Satan. They exist. Yeah. And then uh, you can join him. Thou shalt have no other gods, small g, plur, plural, with an S, gods, plural. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Uh, so does that include statues of angels or, uh, statues of a woman with a child that they call Mary, uh, birds, you know, have you ever heard of Bohemian Grove in California? They got a big owl. What's, what's up with an owl? Why an owl? Well, an owl Believe it or not, when it flies, it's silent. And it has very good night vision, almost perfect night vision. So when it sneaks up, when it sneaks up on its prey at night, like a mouse, grabs it in its talons, kills it, and devours it. And you don't even hear it coming. I don't know. Maybe that's why. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven 
above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. You know? Girls and uh, guys, uh, you know, uh, are you jealous when somebody else flirts with your uh, significant other? Should be. These people have open marriages. That's not a marriage, and they really don't care about their spouse. It's just somebody to share the bed with, basically, you know. It's, you know, it's like trading in the old car for a new car. Or, well, I don't know about new, but uh, for a different model, I should say, you know. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Oh, yeah. How about uh, Exodus thirty four fourteen? For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous. <laughs> so when people say, ah, well, I know the secret name of God. Well, it's not a secret. His name is Jealous. His name is also Reverend, by the way. Did you know Reverend's a name for God? Reverend. So when you see that uh, black pastor up in New York that calls himself Reverend, should ask him, why are you calling yourself a name of the Lord? You know, really. Reverend Jesse Jackson, right? For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. Deuteronomy 4.24, for the Lord thy God is a consuming fire. Even a jealous God. Deuteronomy 5, nine, Thou shalt not bow down thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Uh, do you get the idea? I do. Ezekiel 8, 3. And he put forth the form of an hand and took me by a lock of mine head and the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north where was the seat of the image of jealousy. So evidently they had some kind of an idol there. Where was the seat of the image of jealousy which provoketh to jealousy? And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in the plain. P-L-A-I-N. You know, a plain is like a flat area, not a airplane. I, I, that's a joke, people. I know. Don't quit my day job. Oh, wait, I'm retired. <laughs> Never mind. Verse 5. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou? What they do, even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary. But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. Verse 7. 
Ezekiel 8, verse 7. And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. You ever heard that expression, a hole in the wall? Right out of the Bible. There you go. Nothing new under the sun, Solomon said. You know, there's a lot of sayings that come from the Bible. A lot of them. Verse 8, Ezekiel 8.8. 8. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I have digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things, and abominable beasts, and all the idols, idols of the house of Israel, portrayed upon the wall round about. So if you want to worship a snake, we got a snake. You want to worship a pig, they probably got a pig. You know? Verse 11. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. Now, I don't know if you know this, but this is the... Um, what they want you to think are the Sanhedrin, the 70, the Sanhedrin, the, their uh, court of lawmakers or interpreting the words of the Lord. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. Uh... You know, let, let's face it, with age comes experience and hopefully wisdom. And, you know, here it is, I'm in my 60s now, and uh, you know what? I don't, uh, I am nothing, nothing like I was when I was in my 20s. Matter of fact, you uh, per the Levitical law, the book of Leviticus, a male could not be a priest until he was 25 years old. And look, gals, let me tell you, you know as well as I do, guys do not, for the most part, guys do not even start growing up until they're between 25 and 30 years old. And a male could not be the high priest until he was at least 30 years old. At least. So, you know, even the Bible tells you these things, right? And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Jezaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. So, here it is, the censer was... a. Uh, you know, for burning incense. I guess you could call that holy smoke, right? Except for it wasn't very holy. Verse 12. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery, for they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. Oh yeah, the Lord doesn't see you. And the Lord's left. He doesn't uh, He doesn't know what's going on on the earth. You really? You think the Lord doesn't see? The Lord doesn't know? I don't think so. Verse 13. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Verse 14. Oh, this is going to be very, uh, some detailed stuff. All right, let's go. Ezekiel 8 and verse 14. 
Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Now, who is Tammuz? Well, the Bible doesn't exactly tell you who, but so we'll have to go to history and legends and what have you. According to legends, Tammuz was the son of the spring goddess of fertility. She has many names. Some people say that Nimrod married a woman named Semiramis. You know, Nimrod in the Bible, uh, Genesis, I don't remember where. You could look it up. But Nimrod was never mentioned as a good thing in the Bible. Now, supposedly he died. Uh, some say that, uh, uh, let's see, Seth murdered, or not murdered, Seth killed him because Nimrod was a murderer. I don't know how true that is. The Bible doesn't say. But uh, I don't know. But the deal is, Semiramis had many, many different names. She was called Astarte. She was called Ishtar. She was called Isis. Depends on what area you were in. She was the goddess of spring fertility. Uh, the Jews worshipped her as the queen of heaven. Guess what one of her other names is? Easter. What? What, Chaplain Bob? What did you just say? I said Easter. E-A-S-T-E-R. Easter. Yeah. Yeah, like, well, today is April 2nd, 2021. Sunday is supposed to be Easter. You know, bunny rabbits, uh, the Playboy bunny, I mean, uh, the Easter bunny. Uh, eggs, chocolate eggs, you know, spring goddess of fertility. Yeah. Well, supposedly, Semiramis' husband died. So she married her son, Tammuz. You know, have a little incense, incest in there, right? I don't know. It, you know, spring goddess of fertility, Easter. Yeah. And it's funny, the church of Rome that departed the Lord a long time ago uh, supposedly they gave us changed Passover or the Lord's Supper into Easter. And if you look, the uh, ADL is a Jewish group and they admit the Vatican and the Pope supports them. And what I find interesting is the modern Jews named a month in honor of Tammuz. It corresponds roughly with um, March and April. I got an image of it. You could take a look from one of their own websites. You know, and what kills me about these so-called Hebrew roots people, oh, they're so quick to point out well, Easter's a, a pagan holiday, and the church celebrates it. we got to go back to our Hebrew roots. But what they don't tell you is, the you-know-whos named a month after Tammuz, which is tied in with Easter. It's all, that's all part of the, the Easter bunny thing. Uh, you know... <sighs> It gets me. It really does. Yeah, they'll condemn uh, the churches for doing Easter, which I understand. I don't like 
you know, I don't do Easter. But, you know, they will, people like 119 Ministries, they absolutely positively will never tell you about Tammuz and Ezekiel 8 and Easter being celebrated long before the Vatican ever existed. They will not tell you about that, but they'll condemn the churches for celebrating Easter, rightly so, but they ignore where it came from. Really. They're a bunch of liars and hypocrites. That's uh, my opinion. But what do I know? I'm just some guy that reads the Bible. Yeah, Easter. Look it up. It's a noun. It's a name. Spring goddess of fertility. If you've got a really good dictionary, it'll tell you that. Matter of fact, the Wiccans, W-I-C-C-A-N-S, uh, practice what they call Wicca, W-I-C-K-E. And if you put a D on the end, it's wicked. Um, that's the old English spelling. But the deal is, um, Easter is their goddess. You know, Mother Earth, spring goddess of fertility. That's why you got the Playboy Bunny. I mean the Easter Bunny. And the egg. You know, life comes from the egg, right? Uh, to them, it doesn't come from God. The Father doesn't. Oh, no. No, no. It comes from the Easter egg. Or the bunny rabbit. and all. Yeah. Uh, it's, Yeah. You know, I spent uh, probably close to a year studying uh, all this satanic stuff just so that when I would never be fooled, well, not maybe not never, but not easily fooled with these practices in the church. And one thing I've noticed, you cannot reform Babylon. Oh, and by the way, Tammuz and Ishtar and all that stuff comes from Babylon. It all does. Oh, there's a book called uh, The Two Babylons by, uh, I think it's Alexander Hislop. And uh, they pin everything on the Roman Catholic Church. Well, you know what? You know... That kind of stuff is a smokescreen. I mean, I'm not saying his information is wrong. It's actually correct. But he totally avoids where it came from before the Roman Catholic Church, which is like Ezekiel 8 here. You know, they he won't tell you what the you-know-whos or uh, their little Babylonian uh, rituals and what have you. He won't tell you about that, but he'll sure point the finger at uh, the Roman Catholic Church, just like they tell you, oh, yeah, Rome is Mystery Babylon, the Great, in the Book of Revelation. No, it's a part of it. It's a part of it, just like the U.S. and the EU and all the rest of the world. We're all a part of it. But if you look, the Bible tells you Mystery Babylon killed the prophets. And I'm sorry, the only prophet that ever went to Rome was Paul. Read the book of Romans. And one is not plural. Mystery Babylon killed the prophets. Where were the prophets sent to? Jerusalem. And so, yeah. So let's go back to Ezekiel 8. And if you want to, you can look up uh, Tammuz. And the you know who's named a month after Tammuz. And if you look at the calendar thing with the that little their little six pointed star, yeah. Verse fourteen. Then he brought me to the door of the gate to the Lord's of the Lord's house, which was toward the north. And behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? 
Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. You know, there's a reason why Satan wanted to infiltrate the church and put all the things that God hates and get us doing satanic rituals. And you wonder why the church has no power. Because the Spirit of the Lord is not there. People replaced uh, the Spirit of God with Bible seminary. I mean, Bible cemetery. I mean, Bible college. Cemetery. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you got to go to Bible college. And get, a, get a degree. Learn about, uh, you know, how to, how to preach like John Hagee. Verse 16, listen to this. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord. They had turned their backs against the Lord, away from the Lord. They turned their backs on the Lord. We're about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east. And they worship the sun toward the east. You didn't know it. They had Easter sunrise services even back in the days of Ezekiel. Did you not know that? Oh, yeah. They turn their back on the temple of the Lord and they're looking at the sun rising up. And they worship the sun toward the east. The sun god. Oh, yeah. And who is the sun god? Uh, the angel of light? So who is this sun that they're worshiping? Well, let's go to 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 13. And uh, it's amazing all these Hebrew roots people hate Paul, generally. Not all of them, but... So, 2 Corinthians, and Corinth was a city in Greece, by the way. 2 Corinthians eleven thirteen, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Let me tell you something, people. You go down to Central America. You had a bunch of people there like the Aztecs and the Incas and the Mayans. And I think it was Olmecs. I don't know. I Probably not pronouncing that right. But uh, they built pyramids, which were on, they were places of worship. They did human sacrifices. And there are depictions of the sun carved into all the rocks that they used to build these pyramids. Depictions of the sun. Oh, yeah. All right, so. And they worship the sun toward the east. Ezekiel 8, now we're going to go to verse 17. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger, and lo, they put the branch to their nose. And don't ask me because I don't know. I've heard different I've heard different things, but I don't know. It's some kind of ritual. I don't know. 
Verse 18. Oh, before I finish this up, let me tell you something. There was a church in Missouri, um, Western Missouri. I think it was Joplin. I'm not sure. They had a woman pastor of some liberal denomination, probably do gay weddings, probably reading an NIV Bible. And guess what? They were having Easter services. Everybody's dressed in their nice Easter Sunday best, you know, and the little kids, children holding their little Easter baskets and, you know, their little bunny rabbits and their little chocolate eggs. And a tornado ripped through, tore the church apart and killed a number of people. I don't know how many, but it was, you know, like maybe half a dozen. And then people that survived the storm said, you know, that really shook our faith up. That shook up our faith. Why would God let that happen? Why would God let a tornado tear up our church when we're having Easter services on Sunday? Why, Lord, would you let this happen? Verse 17. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to answer, and lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. Oh, yeah. Why did God let that happen? Real simple. Are you honoring the God of heaven or are you honoring the God of this world? I mean, if they'd asked me, I'd have told them, you know, but they didn't ask me. Of course, their minister was probably a, Les, a Leslie, if you catch my drift. There are certain keywords I don't want to say anymore, but uh, when I say Leslie, I mean, uh, you know, uh, a being at the end. Yeah, you know, a woman and her partner, you know, of the female persuasion. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was a United Methodist Church. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Happened a number of years ago. Look up the uh, Easter Sunday church tornado in Missouri. Joplin, I think. And you can read about it. And they can't understand why God would let that happen. Oh. You know, it really shook up our faith. Well. Maybe you should be reading Ezekiel chapter 8. And not in an NIV either. And guess what Bible, the most popular Bible in uh, San Francisco is? Yeah, the NIV. Of course. So, all right, well, that's the end of Ezekiel chapter 8. I will continue on YouTube for as long as I'm allowed. God the Father... When he has other plans, will allow my channel to be taken down. But until then, I will teach what I can. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.